everybody, surprise! Remember whenever I said I was going to play Dark Souls 3? I actually meant to say I'm going to play Dark Souls three times. No, I shouldn't say that either. I mean, so I have to, I'll just lie about that again whenever the time comes. How about that? Okay, you guys have been bitching about retention. If you don't know what retention is, it's basically... If, you, if a YouTuber makes a whole bunch of videos, then you get used to having them around, and you pay more attention to them, and you think about them more. Sort of like a lover. So you guys have been wondering, Where are you, Plague? How come your dick's not in my ass? Or whatever. And there's no good reason like I can give you. Like, I, I apologize. My dick should be deep, deep in there. I'm sorry that it's not. Oh, it should look so cute this way. But what I'm going to do here, this is not going to be a lore playthrough. Everyone that's watching like the playlist of this in the future laughs hardly to themselves. Ho ho ho! Not a lore playthrough, he says. This is before the lawsuits. Ho ho ho! But... By the way, Master Key, yes, yes, always Master Key. But what I'm going to do here is... I'm just going to play for fun. That's what it is. Because I was thinking, what can I do is... For, I'm going to keep her bald for the time being so I know what I'm working with here. I thought, what can I do as far as retention goes? Because I don't want to just make a bunch of art gripe videos. I imagine people are getting tired of those. What to do, what to do, what to do. Playthrough, playthrough. I haven't done one of those in a long time. A lot of people complain about the fact that I'm not making them. Even though this is an art channel, sort of, whatever. It's a whatever channel. It's me channel. So, ah, I decided, you know what? I'll do another playthrough. I thought I'd grown beyond such things, but I haven't. It's just gotten worse over time. Let's change her face a little bit. I'm going to do a time skip in regards to making her stupid head. Ah, but for the time being, hold on, hold on. Let's start with this, actually. I don't think I've ever started with one. By the way, l hold on. L let's look at all their faces. N not from a lore perspective, of course, because lore, dirty, lore, bad. Fun, good, oh lord. Ugh. I never went through and showed all the female faces, I think. But there's no lore significance to any of them. Pasty white lady. Slightly less pasty white lady. Weird white lady. Mmm, white lady. And wait, are these the si no, they aren't the same person. Just this is the, this is like a fatter version of this lady for some reason. And of course, racist white lady. That doesn't make any sense. Hook nose white lady. And are these? No, they're, they're not the same thing. And hmm, this is probably racist in some other way that I'm not aware of. Yay, Japan! And oh god, this poor creature lady. And finally, you know, <laughs> it's kind of weird that. Even though it's a Japanese game, they didn't really make Japanese presets exactly. But I'm going to pick the uh, the quote-unquote Far East Traveler quote. Qu I actually did. Why did I do quote marks? You couldn't even... Well, whatever. You could, you could visualize them. But I'm going to start with her. So anyways. Spoilers on this. This game, this playthrough, is going to have some mods running. It's going to have some shit going on. And I'm not going to pay attention to a lot of things. I'm going to miss a whole bunch of stuff because this is not a comprehensive... I should be clapping. This. It's not going to be a comprehensive... Why am I whispering? It's not going to be a comprehensive lore playthrough like the other one was. This one, I plan on it being much shorter. It'll probably still have hour-long episodes because I don't feel like splitting the damn things up. I did like a flippy hand motion, by the way. Split those damn things up! Mm -mm. So... Yeah, this playthrough is just going to be me fucking around. Because I want to have fun, and like I said in my latest video, this is going to date things. About Winnie, fuck werewolf girls, and no, uh, the other thing, the other thing. Uh, you need to do things for yourself sometimes. You can't drive yourself crazy with worrying about, ooh, shaved back, ew. Uh, you can't worry about constantly working all the time. And this has kind of been a problem with me. Is I kind of lock up sometimes if I get to one of a major project and I start worrying about starting another one. So I'm just gonna fuck around for a while. And that's what we're gonna do. And that's what I'm gonna focus on. Fucking around! Mm! So, time skip ahead, starting now, and I'll try to make a pretty lady. And if that doesn't work, we'll just make an abomination because fuck it. No, I'm... No! Pretty lady. It has to be pretty lady. Because this it wouldn't be the same otherwise. Okay. So pretty Amazon lady, go me, future me, do it, do it, shave back, do it. Well, no 
itself a success if they start beating off to it. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. If you don't like it, fuck you, because that's about as good as Dark Souls is gonna get. Unless you want to make, of course, a standard pasty-faced, no-chin-having thing that everyone on the internet loves making, even though those also look absolutely terrible. I think Nick one time showed me some picture of- he might have been Dark Souls 2 that he made it in, I don't remember. But he made himself a pretty little lady, and she didn't look too bad. By the way, Nick is doing a sort of similar, if you don't know who Nick is, Bitter Bits. In other words, YouTube, YouTube username Bitter Bits uh, is also doing a, a playthrough similar to the one that I'm going to be doing. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, he's doing a okay, even though it takes him a long time to get those out, doesn't it, Nick? Yes, yes, yes. All right. So, what do we name our pretty lady here? He's not going to have lore, any lore significance at all. I thought about this beforehand, <laughs> which is to say I started a playthrough before, <laughs> and I ended up spending the next hour trying to figure out a name after I spent 15 minutes making her. <laughs> so I decided to go back to the ye old English. This is kind of my thing. I like going back to old English and taking words and shit, making names out of them. Like, most of the, most of the shit in my universe does that garbage. So I decided to combine the word for lady with the word for fire and come up with a freelid here. So that's going to be her abominable name. And she's not really supposed to be so much pretty and fuckable as she's supposed to be more, uh, I don't know, sort of warrior woman almost that will like do stuff to you. She came from a faraway land of Far East Traveler Town and... Now she's undead, and she's going to beat people up. That's her lore. Yay. Okay, so let's start our no lore playthrough of this game. Yes. Well, I yeah, I know. I see your accusatory stare, Freeland. It's There's going to be a little bit of lore. It's going to be a lore playthrough again. So, I want you fuckers to watch this. In the age of ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by... Because you wouldn't imagine the number of people that do not even remember this crates, cinematic. Arch trees, and everlasting Before there was any history whatsoever, it was just this shit. Nothing but grey garbage with stone dragons then lying around. Fire. And with fire came this is where I'm going to start bitching about Dark Souls 3. Remember whenever we thought, oh, the sequels will explain where the fire came from. Light and <sighs> That's funny. It's a funny joke. And of course, light and so instead of playing Dark Souls 2 and 3, I guess I'll talk a little bit about them during the course of this playthrough. Which is to say, I'll be bitching endlessly about it. From the dark. Isn't it sad that Plague's playing Dark Souls 1 again? Because he just can't bring himself to bother with the other series because it didn't work out the way he wanted? How pathetic. Now, you, you can't really say that about Dark Souls 1. Because fucking look at this shit. Before I even knew what Dark Souls was, I remember seeing this. This short little bit of this giant pile of skeletons rising up. Look how scarred her hands are. Did you ever notice that? Her daughters of chaos. Like her hands are physically burned, which is kind of neat. Grin, like she's not actually immune to her own power. And his but I remember seeing that cinematic of Nito and going, holy shit! And, the and I had this weird idea, so like this is that forgotten. weird, almost sort of indie Japanese game that apparently is really janky and no one's heard about it. With the ah, foolhardy times. Lords. They challenge the dragons. They challenge the dragons for God knows what reason. Even though the dragons are basically just piles of stone. And they weren't bothering any of that one in the back. I always love that one. We shall burn their trees to the ground. They're just stone columns, not really trees. Burn them! Alright. Oh no, not disease. What were our stone bodies do against disease? That used to be something's testicle, no doubt. Ah, a bitch. You 
so nasty and I always wondered, if, like, he looked really bloody whenever he was squeezing that ship. <laughs> this is a nasty sequence of words I just made. I always wondered if it was his blood. Because stone dragons shouldn't really have blood. Eh, whatever. But, soon the but there's more to go and do with that, isn't there? And only dark will remain. Seems like I talked about that in regards to Seath. How he kind of looks like he's inverted. Like all the magic is on the outside and Even all the stone is on the inside and former crystals. Embers. With the other dragons, it's the reverse. Sees not light, but only endless Shame that never got explained. Hi, Anastasia. And amongst the living she should like caress his skin and like pull back. Ew! Carriers, so leathery! Slimy for some outside. reason. I didn't think dead people would be weird. Mm. The dark sign, remember that? How that got explained? <laughs> it, get, it made me so angry. Like, of course it did. You don't even know what I'm talking about yet. Someone was trying to say that Gwyn was the one that caused the undead curse because of a single item description of the yes, dumb armors. The dark you know, the armors in Dark Souls 3, the generic dark wraith knights that don't make any sense that have the the symbol on their chest those guys the ring ones this land, Gwyn put it there that's the dark sign he made the, the curse yeah 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 that's what that means dumbass one of the unfortunate things about the dark souls community is it's so obsessed over secrets what does it mean hidden meanings implications that people go absolutely batshit when it comes to making shit up. I think one guy even got really angry at me this for saying that his theory was crazy. I can't remember what it, that entailed, what it exactly was. Like, you're the problem with this community. No one's allowed to think for themselves. Like, well, if you're wrong, you're just wrong. Like, I can't help you beyond that. But in regards to Dark Souls, there's always there are a lot of crazy ideas. Like, people have all sorts of really insipid theories. You can't have everything. Like, it, it really sucks, because... Dark Souls is not... It's not Bloodborne. Like, Bloodborne is really convoluted. Dark Souls is pretty straightforward. It, it never needed a sequel. But, you know, that's another thing in itself. So a lot of people go absolutely apeshit in regards to that. So hold on for a second. Let's take a look at what we got here. We got this. Actually, she looks kind of good like that. Like a Raggedy Andy, except it's all jerky. Like she's chewy, but she's dangerous. I like it. But, I didn't make this shit so that we could walk around as beef jerky. Plus, there's a few other things I need to do to be able to get some mod juiciness rolling. So, and ta-da, just like that, we're looking moderately okay for Dark Souls, aren't we? In fact, we're looking a little bit better than I remember. I wonder why. Hmm. Yes, it seems that Dark Souls has improved in recent years somehow, and I'm not sure what exactly the cause might be. The presets in the game tell you whether you're going to have a big head or a big upper body. This is the plague preset, I think. Okay. So, dungeon cell key, let's head out. At one point in time, I actually considered doing like a uh, speed run playthrough of this, but then I realized I suck at the game, so I'm not going to. Oh wait, hold on. Hi, Baggy. I have to do that before we move on. Hello, Asylum Asshole. Okay. Hello, guy weeping against the wall. I'm not going to say hi to everyone. I'm not all your friends. Okay. So, lots of interest to be had in the future. Playthrough is just going to be me fucking around. Which actually is kind of unfortunate because I spent a lot of time like, Oh, what do the bricks mean? And actually, one of the... I I've said this many times in my prior playthrough, but... One of the things is, is that it's not just me looking at stuff and just bullshitting. A lot of it is just an art guy sitting down and thinking, ah, what would it look like? Damn, she looks good. Yeah, pull open the door, baby. Uh-oh. So already, you can probably see there's some minor differences in this game. I'm not gonna, it's not gonna turn into a polygon thing. Like, I'm not gonna, what, what are the, the McElroy brothers? 
I'm not gonna do one of those things. Hi, I'm Louie Anderson. This is my running mate, Pizza. I'm not gonna go like ape shit or anything like that. But already mod discovered, I guess. By Asylum Demon. I'm not gonna demonstrate how futile it is whaling gisting. Mod number one, Aggression Mod. This one's a little bit different. There, there's been actually multiple versions of the aggression mod over time, and people have made the aggression mod, you know, just because it, it's kind of interesting having a mode in which uh, monsters are actually aggressive, and the game is not just... Ooh, kind of missed that one, didn't you, buddy? And the game just kind of, you know, it actually treats things a little bit realistically, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like how that... That makes him wise up, but uh, there's there's been various uh, iterations of the that particular mod, and uh, the initial one I think was one where it just made everything walk towards a bonfire, whether they were NPCs, whether they were enemies, they just walked towards the bonfire. With the idea being, well, you spawn at the bonfire, so this aggression mod is nice how the hair clips through like that. So the idea with that aggression mod was, well, they're naturally going to be heading towards you. Which was a nice idea, but it was very messy and... Woo! Hello, Mr. Hollow. So, <laughs> they all worked a little bit differently. Ow, son of a bitch. I'm gonna die before I even get started. Uh, and that didn't work too well. Like, it had some problems. So, the next version of the Gresham Mod, the one that you usually see, is whenever the, uh... Enemies and even the NPCs will see you and then walk towards you. This one's a little bit different. NPCs do not, like, follow you around. Even though this is less hilarious than this happens to be. Like, Oscar, in this case, is sitting down and actually behaving himself. So, this particular Gresham Mod only affects enemies, and in this particular circumstance, it only affects their sight, so they don't have magic vision. But they they can see you from far away, and if they see you, they will try to attack you. Oh, you. You're no horror. I'm really not. I I'm beautiful. Beautiful. I'm afraid. I'll die soon. Then How do you know that? I wish to ask oh, you're just giving me the tutorial of how undeath works. Undead. Hear me out, will you? <laughs> It's so cute that they actually give you a prompt for it. Regrettably, I have Will you listen to him, player? Yeah, okay. There is an old saying what happens if you say no? Thou who art undead art chosen. In thine exodus from the undead asylum, maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate the of the undead shall be shut no. Well, now you know. And I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, is how if you've ever wondered why he's dying, it's because of that hole in the roof. As I mentioned in my prior playthrough, and I even brought up in my stupid animation, he actually got beat down here by the asylum demon that we're gonna fight later. Oh, and this. Take this shit as well. Now I must bid farewell. <laughs> Goodbye. I will not die. That. So go now, and thank you. Now we're going to wait here, and we're going to wait for you to die. Any day now. Kind of wasting my time, though. All right, uh, we'll just uh, be heading out then. Time to hit the old dusty trail. Guess I'll just run right back in and watch you die. Oh, you stood up. I saw you. We all saw. Liar. He had just enough strength to stand up before. Maybe he, he like he was sitting down because he was holding all his undead organs in. And then, like, when he stood, ooh, ooh. And then whenever he stood up, that's when the troubles began. Okay. As you can tell, this playthrough is going to be a little bit different. And this is kind of the reason why I started this playthrough. Because I wanted to have a different experience with this particular version of Dark Souls. And this particular version of Dark Souls does not, like, have pizza textures or anything like that. But it does have fun ragdoll still. Whee! I missed you, ragdoll. Whee! All right. So, let's rest up real fast, just for the hell of it. Since I didn't open that door, what happens if you... Oh yeah, it's locked, isn't it? I guess... <laughs> locked by some sort of shit. I don't know what the fuck it is. 
Uh, it's interesting that the, I, I don't have a lore reason for it, but it's interesting that the the door does indeed lock behind you. All right, this is this is Perry Hollow, the first guy that always. Yay! I did it. I'm a hero. Yeah. I'm so handsome. Oh, I guess I should put clothes on. If I must, actually, hold on. Isn't that isn't that her little hat so cute? I always thought a lot of the. A lot of there are some female versions of uh, certain sets in the game. Eee! There are. Oh yeah, I forgot that this was here. I completely forgot this was here. I mean, there's nothing here. It doesn't matter. But I never talked about the lore implications of this. But there, there's nothing. It's just a fucking hole in the wall because of model geometry. Anyways, um. But there are some female versions of armor in this game. Not many though. Not many. Uh, in Demon Souls, it was really bad because there were entire sets that you just could not have access to. And in this game, it's more you can have access to any set. Like, see, they didn't immediately rush towards me. You can have ooh, you can have <laughs> access to any set, um, but there will be some physical differences. Like the, the Pyromancer. Oh, come on! The Pyromancer set's a good example of that. The female version always looked really good to me. Like it's this kind of faded gray that still has a little bit of saturation to it. It's really good looking. I really like it. Yeah. Yeah. That noise kind of reminds me of Johnny Castaway. You guys know what Johnny Castaway is? Go look it up. It's a fun screensaver. Back in like 1992. Man, I watch that screensaver all the time. I love Johnny Castaway. There's probably a YouTube video of all the various things that he did. Now you can hear that Asylum Demon being none too happy with me. I'm guessing he managed to see me, like, maybe enemies actually can see you through fog. I don't know. I'm not sure what the rules are. So, there's going to be a lot of uh, misadventures for uh, whatever the fucker, what the hell did I call her? Freelid. There's going to be a lot of misadventures for young Freelid, or old Freelid. I don't know how old she is. Alright, let's see if I can do this jump attack. It's been a while. Yay, I did it. What? That's it? That's all I got? You, it's supposed to take off like half of his health. I even did the uh, the jumping ver variant of it that does more damage. Jeez Louise. Oh well, I guess I'll somehow power through this fight. Ooh, my roll timing is not what it used to be. Playing, uh, not that I play them too terribly often, but playing Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3, oh no, and Dark Souls 3, Especially Dark Souls 3. Woo. Kind of fucks you up a little on timing. Because you become very used to having a not Dark Souls time where everything is obsessed with being fast. And everything is very responsive because they became... I kind of get the... Damn. I for, keep forgetting that there's a, more of a delay on timing as far as rolls go in this game. Like I said, it's been a while. Yeah, it's really weird. Thank you for not killing me with that swing. Yeah, my timing's all weird now. Because in 3 and Bloodborne, Bloodborne is, Bloodborne's a completely different game, so the comparison's not really fair. Dark Souls 3, one of my main complaints about it, as far as gameplay goes, is they got... It seems like they've gotten too obsessed over time with trying to be a quote-unquote real game. Like, it needs to be a real AAA game. Like, one of the things I really love about Dark Souls is that bosses are not really... Like, there's very rarely boss rooms. Like, I'm sure you're... I know. You know what I mean. A lot of enemies just feel like they're just a thing that you found. Like, in a room. Or... Like, it was... It's, it's not like Monster Hunter where you can just find it out in the wild or anything like that. But, um... It, it has more of that feel. that It's more just a world that you're living in more than this is the end boss of level 2.151613 or anything like that. I wonder what this is going to be. It's a crest shield. Now, if you know your Dark Souls, you know that's not supposed to be a crest shield. That is supposed to be a generic soul, if I remember. So, mod number two discovered... Mod number two discovered item randomization. It took me a good long while to get that shit working. I'll tell you that goddamn it right now. 
Oh, about drove me insane. I had to actually uninstall Dark Souls at least one time to be able to get everything working correctly. Because my aggression mod is also part of like a, the batch files that uh, have all the information of Dark Souls inside of them. And trying to recompile all of it together was a nightmare. Come here, sexy lady! To leave the undead asylum. I didn't even stop and talk about how pretty the mountains were. To the land of the ancient. This playthrough is a failure, and that take that its skybox does not look particularly great. Lord the sky, the the actual mountains look magnificent. By the way, if, I, I've watched that fucking Macroy Dark Souls video so much from Polygon. Like all I can see now is just pizza everywhere. <laughs> Experiencing few, uh, what I might call, frame rate hiccups. That's another thing you guys should go watch. Alright. She looks, she doesn't look too bad if you don't look too close. Good on you, Dark Souls. Okay, so, immediately you can see... The NPCs don't get up and follow you around. So, mission accomplished on that one. But the other thing you're gonna notice... Enemies, uh, enemies are not too happy to see you. So every single time, every single time that I s sit down at this bonfire, I'm gonna have to deal with these guys. Unfortunately, I'm not really strong enough for this to be trivial, so I have to pay at least a little bit of attention. I wonder if a single no. I was hoping like an R1 and an R2 would finish him off, but that is not the case. I'll be real happy to get another weapon though. I I, I have a good general idea of what kind. A build that she's gonna be running. It's not gonna. It's gonna be sort of quality because it's gonna be like last time. I I am the sort of player, as you guys know, that likes to change outfits and weapon sets and everything a whole bunch during my playthroughs. And you notice that their actual drops don't change in this particular. I think you can change that, or maybe that's something that the dude's working on. I'll have all the names and stuff of all the people that actually made these mods and whatnot later on. So this is supposed to be, I think. A twin humanity? Or just one humanity? I forget what it is exactly. It is a humanity of some sort. In this case, Large Soul Vault Proud Knight. Which is pretty damn good. Not supposed to have something like that that fast. Because a Large Soul Vault Proud Knight, that's a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, souls. And this is supposed to be Black Fire Bombs. In this case, it's going to be Transient Curse. So already you can see the value of this sort of run. Uh, recompiling the locations of all the items. And in this case, I did choose to also recompile the locations of, uh, uh, key items as well. There's different variations of this particular mod that the guy has made. Uh, I think four of them, including an uh, option to make it so that armor sets are, uh, strewn about. Like, you know what? One of my favorite things about Dark Souls is that you don't have to farm for fucking sets. Like, ever so often there's an enemy. Very rarely, like, uh... You know, uh, the Boulder Knights, I guess, are an example. Where you actually do have to farm them to be able to get everything to drop off of them. But it's very rare. Usually you just find a corpse and you pick up the whole set. Oh god, Dark Souls 3 made me miss that so goddamn much. Anyways. Uh, but, uh... Th there's an option to turn that off. So that you actually have to go around finding them. I don't know why people would want it, but it's, it's there. Well, hey, sad sack. What do we have here? You must be a new arrival. Let me guess. Fate of the undead, right? Well, you're not the first. Mm, but there's no salvation here. You'd have done better to rot in the undead asylum. Huh. Too late now. <sighs> well, since you're here, let me help you out. There are Actually, two, two bells, bells of awakening. One's up above in the under I've often wondered about this guy's purpose. The other is far, far below. I, mean, I know that he's a tutorial NPC, down. and he tells you what Bring you need to do, right? And in every happens. game, they've always done that. Brilliant, right? But as far as a character, he's always kind of sucked. A feeling that won't stop you. So, the one thing I'll give Dark Souls 3... Oh, there, there, there are several good things to say about Dark Souls 3, I guess. Most of it's mechanical. Which is kind of weird, because that's what I said about Dark Souls 2, is that most of its improvements were mechanical. Uh, but th there is 
something to be said of in Dark Souls 3, this guy, Hawkwood, is that what his name was? I can't remember because I just don't care. She is, she does look all right, doesn't she? Especially in this gear. She looks nice. Um, is that guy actually does have an arc and he, he does do things. He's kind of the same tired old sad sack that you're kind of used to, but still he, he is a character. But in every other version of uh, the series, no matter what it is, if they have a crestfallen whatever, they tend to not really have much of a personality. Which is kind of funny because... I I'll say this, this is a good lead-off discussion, I guess. Dragon scale, holy shit. Um, this is a good lead-off discussion. I I I've thought about it and I I'll phrase it this way. Dark Souls... the what Dark Souls has kind of become reminds me a lot of Star Wars. And I say that because the original Star Wars was a very, very different film than what it ended up becoming. Like, in the first Star Wars, Darth Vader was not Luke's father. Like, that had not existed in anyone's minds yet. Uh, even in the writers. Like, that was an idea that happened later. Wow! Holy shit, that's a, that's a tail cut item. I didn't even know you could do that. That's crazy. Uh, but that didn't exist yet. The, the whole, uh, I am your father. Actually, I think he said... Yeah, he, he does say, no, I am your father, not Luke, I am your father. That's what it is. That's what the discrepancy is. Okay. Better not. I keep thinking I'm gonna see something run down and attack me. I better clear out these dudes while I'm thinking about it. Because even, like, that over there, that Ring of Sacrifice, in my normal playthroughs, I never go get it. I never bother. But in this playthrough, ooh, ooh, texture load-ins. That, that's another mod. It's not really mod, but, you know, it's another thing I'm running. It's a variant of the game I'm running. I'm uh, running texture features. Concentrate. Okay. Gotta be careful. Uh... I'm running uh, texture features, so it's calling, uh, causing it a slowdown. Uh, but but since that's completely new, I need to go check and see what it is. Because it could be anything. That's what I love about this. Makes it a lot of fun. God damn it. Shit. Now I've got to make myself fucking beautiful again. See? I'm going to have to use Cheat Engine and everything. That's another thing. I'm actually having to use Cheat Engine to make another mod that you guys have not seen yet work. Which will be a fun time as well. Here they come again. You know what? Actually, yeah, I use this crazy. Oh, I can't do it. <laughs> oh, no, I'm going to die. <laughs> no, shit, I can't use that either. Oh, I don't have the decks for it. Shit. Shit, fuck. Fuck my ass. God damn it. Shit. Shit, no, get out of here. I wanted something with some range. This fucking battle axe is so goddamn slow. There we go, yes. Yes! But anyways, yeah, Star Wars. Like, uh, Darth Vader wasn't... There was no Darth title. God damn, you're aggressive. Darth was just... It was his name. Is is why uh, Ben Kenobi referred to him as being Darth. Like, he dressed him as Darth. Because that was his dumb first name. Because Lucas doesn't know how to write a fucking name. Um, so, it, like, the whole... All Jedi wear robes. No, they didn't. Uh, the reason why the Jedi wore robes in the original is because they were on a desert. And, of course, when you're in the desert, you wear a loose-fitting robe so that you, one, deflect some heat, and any heat that's being generated by your body uh, is radiated out much easier. That's the reason why people that live in deserts wear robes. But since that became so ingrained that, oh, Jedi are cool, they wear robes, over time, that that's just what happened with that. And there's lots of other examples in regards to, like, how the Jedi developed this weird culture around them. And, uh, it, there's all sorts of shit. I'm just... I'm not going to go into all of it. I'm sure that there's people that are way more... Wow, that one... The one up here, actually, is one that rushed down there and attacked me. Holy shit. Um, but I'm just to say that Star Wars changed a lot from the very first movie. And... 
holy shit! <laughs> this stuff does get crazy in this this version, doesn't it? This is the thing that you use to unlock uh, the path to Gwendolyn. Wow. The the creator of this mod does say that this is not a lore friendly playthrough. Before I try to jump over there, I guess I'll go up here and get this one. Um, but Dark Souls has changed a lot over time too. And that's kind of the thing that I was kind of afraid of in regards to Dark Souls getting sequels in the first place. Aw, oh, you couldn't have possibly seen me, you old rat bitch. You old dirty skank. Okay, this is supposed to be one humanity. What do we got now? Blue Titanite Chunk. Doesn't really benefit us too much, but it's still nice to have. Um... So... <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. Well, that's beneficial. I, I did play very brief. I, like, I played very briefly the test and see if this mod was working. So I knew what the uh, humanity was going to be. I knew that was going to be a solo problem. I knew what the firebombs were going to be. And I knew that those guys were going to attack me. But other than that, like, that's as far as I went in. <laughs> I didn't expect it. I knew that the the locations were going to be different, but wow. Uh, people, I guess, will complain about me getting the Master Key. Because why would you get the Master Key? Part of the adventure is uh, seeing, like, picking up a key like this and saying, Oh, I can go to this place. That completely changes the nature of the playthrough. Uh, key to the Iron Bar separating them. For the cursed ghost poses danger to life and spirit. The legends speak of the terrible dark, which was sealed away. But anyways, Dark Souls has very much so become a completely different animal over time. And that's one of the things that I was kind of afraid of. And it happened, and unfortunately now you have people... Like, people will ask me questions about the the series and I'll tell them the answer in regards to Dark Souls 1 and then they'll bring up some nonsense that 3 said or 2 said and it, it's it, it doesn't make any sense like for the series like a a great example Dark Souls 3 it, oh, actually hold on yeah nothing and it seems like no you can't kill her that's what it is I think she's the only NPC in the game that you can't kill with a weapon. Even uh, Rickert down there, you can kill. I tested that. You you guys saw it whenever I went through my, the uh, end of my last playthrough. When I went through and started killing everyone. I actually managed to kill him finally with a... I think it was one of the uh, the tail great axes. The dragon great axe, I think. Or great sword, or whatever the hell it's called. Uh, but a great example of that is Dark Souls 3. There's this idea that Gwen gave the 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 early humans like one apparently it was well known that he employed humans in his military which considering that he started with the war with the dragons very early on before like humanity had even really emerged as a species that doesn't really make a lot of sense i'm sure there were some of them but there wasn't like huge vast numbers of them certainly i would think especially when it watched our basement key uh, by the way, sometimes you will also get multiple items per uh, uh, corpse. That's apparently also a thing. So the Watchtower Basement Key. Which one's that? That's the one that lead. Is that the one that leads to Havel? And a, <laughs> a Divine Ember. Okay. <laughs> well, let's uh, see which one this is. Uh, Watchtower Basement Key. Kid the watch on very the basement of the run to forms and kind of remembers a hero. Yeah, of course. This is the one that uh, has a havel inside of it. So I don't actually need any of these keys since I got the master key. I got the master key because I wanted to make sure that I like I I don't gotta get on different hold on, let me get this other thought out first. This is my problem with doing any run through of this game. This is the reason why I did the the I decided on another Dark Souls playthrough. Is because I knew I will have a lot to talk about. And it's overwhelming. But I do have a lot to talk about. But Dark Souls 3, yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Yes. Yes. Yes, please. Oh, this is gonna make things so much easier. What What now, Solaire? What will you do now? I seriously don't know. 
What does happen? Is he just saved already? Did I do it? Did we win the video game? Holy shit. I know, right? But Dark Souls 3... <laughs> Gwen gives a city to humans because they're running amok and the the rain got key to the depths. That's useful. Because now I don't have to do the fucking Capra demon. And I usually run over there and grab that. But that's not going to be a firekeeper's soul for sure, so there's no reason for me to risk it just yet. So let's just move on. But those... The guys with the circle, if you know what I'm talking about. The 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 ones that look almost exactly like Dark Race in every way, except they have a ring on their chest. It seems to be implying that there used to be Dark Race during that time. But that's not possible. And it's not possible because the race only emerge whenever undead beings start to appear. Because the, the flame is fading. And that's what causes the undead curse in the first place. So, d this Dark Souls 3 just starts making up all sorts of crazy shit just because, well, we need something. We need something. And you can really feel that Dark Souls 3, Miyazaki was afraid of introducing too many things, which is the reason why 3 is so safe and rambles on about Prince Lotharic and whatever. Yeah, people that no one cares about. They have nothing to do with anything. But it also starts inventing things like the angels. Like... The angels, what are you talking about? There's nothing about that in Dark Souls. It has nothing to do with anything. But they're there. What does it mean? People ask me all the time. <sighs> I would have to do a comprehensive playthrough of it. But 3 just does not interest me. Remember whenever I started this first playthrough? I talked about how the main purpose of the playthrough was going to be characters. Like Rickard over here. I was going to talk about the characters and characterization. Dark Souls 3 doesn't really have a whole lot of that. It does have people that exist, but they're not really characters. They're Sometimes they're just sort of weird, but they're not really captivating. Like, Grey Rat is my favorite character in that game. And even he is kind of just almost nothing. I say that as if we're about to talk to Rickert, and Rickert himself is probably one of the most boring characters in this game. Hmm? Well, this is unusual. You, haven't lost your head. you know why? Because he's a berserk reference. <gasps> There's those in Dark Souls? Yeah. I'm Rickett, isn't I? I was once an established smith. Look at me now. Can you believe it? This is like one of the things that I don't really mention a whole lot in the first playthrough, was just how many berserk references there are. Like, straight up just stealing entire characters. And Rickard is one of them. Hmm? What is it? Whenever I first started my original playthrough, not to say I'm going to shit on Miyazaki now, but for the sake of context, I had a lot more respect for Miyazaki at the time. Whereas over time, it's become more clear to me that he, I don't want to say steals his content, but he definitely, he gains a lot of inspiration, quote unquote, from the things that he is a fan of. So Rickard... Oh, you, you, I'll do some shit for you. What do you got for me? Now, I think either he's working on it. Yeah, I think he is in version 2 of this mod. Be careful, I don't backstep off the ledge. Come back soon. He's working on the idea of randomizing vendor items. Which I don't really like. That's a bit too much. Because it could be anything at that point. You could really just break the experience if you go to whole hog on that. But this is the reason why I got the master key. Because even if you get one key, it doesn't necessarily mean that you get another key. Although in this case, I had that key anyway, so it didn't matter. Oh, actually it's something boring. Hmm. At least this means... Holy shit, it's so bright now. Ooh, texture loadins. I could go to Blight Town. Or I could do something. This is what I did the, the, the first uh, playthrough. I went down the Valley of the Drakes and got myself killed. Because I forgot that you could roll... Rolling with this game while running by holding your weapon up. You ever notice that the little ball there? Yeah, that's weird. Hmm. And actually, this item here is also worth... Like, usually you can avoid this because the stupid Astora straight sword is not worth the bother. But it could be anything now. Hmm. Shit. 
Yeah, I can pick up one of these. <laughs> Tiptoe. Come on. Come on. There we go. Aww. The one Elizabeth's mushroom in the game. Okay. Guardian armor, wow. Wait, what? What? Wait, 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 wait. Guardian armor. That's... This is the, uh, a drop off the, the Guardians in the DLC. So it also just has ordinary drops off enemies. Huh. Huh. Now, I came down here with the intention of... Oh, here he comes. Here he... Oh, here they come. I came down here with the intention of... Oh, I'll just run past them. But I forgot. Aggression mod. But also, they're very stupid. They are quite stupid. So, let's go down here a little bit and see what they're gonna do. I think, actually, the sunlight maggot is probably fucking me up a little bit. Because, it, not in addition to lighting the surrounding area... It, it doesn't really make anything any darker, it's just that it... It kind of fucks up your eyes, because it, it makes you sort of try to parse the contrast of what you're seeing, I guess. <laughs> you too? Oh, the whole gang is here! Thank goodness, I thought I would have to go looking for all of you. So... I wonder if I can get them to kill themselves by flying off the edge. You guys want to do me a favor and just, like, murder yourselves? I know this 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 train you guys go got going on is real fascinating. Like, oh, but it would it would be real handy if you were just to like murder yourselves. It's a shame I don't have any black fire bombs right now. Okay, so <laughs> that's a bit tight, right? And I don't have any ranged weapons. I can't tank those hits. So it looks like it's time for me to turn back. Like, I really don't have another option there. Because they don't seem... I thought maybe I could trigger them into doing their flying attack. I don't think they're going to do their flying attack. And it is interesting, this guy here is not scripted. you think that he would wake up with the aggression mod already. But nope. Nope, he is apparently uh, scripted so that he doesn't actually do anything until you go in on him. So I need to see what this is. It's not the store straight sword, so it could be anything. It could be something great. It could be trash. I need. I need to know. Lightning spear. It's a lightning spear. It's a lightning spear. Lightning spear. It was a lightning spear, guys. It was a lightning spear. Which actually is a little bit okay. Oh, for fuck's sake, my stats. God damn this bandit. I need to level up is what I need to do. I can't use anything except for this goddamn battle axe and that straight sword hilt. So I guess one of the first things I actually need to do is go level up. That's one of the first things I need to do. I really like... I really am enjoying this. This is more of an adventure now. The fact that I don't know when anything is, and the fact that enemies, as soon as they see me, are like, let's go fuck him up. Let's go. Let's roll. It makes sense for the undead, because the undead crave humanity and souls, right? Like, that's their whole thing. The whole idea with pygmies is that they remember being human, and they're undead, so they kind of had this vague notion of, I want to be me again, right? Like, that's the whole sadness behind it. See, they don't, they, they don't see me. They can still hear me. But if they saw me, they would immediately go for me. I wonder if the one that's in the back, like, I can't see him. He might be able to see me, technically. I'm trying to get one of them to hear me. Yes, just one of them. Wait, what am I doing? I can't kill these things yet. Well, I might be able to, but I kind of doubt it. It's been a while since I've fought one of these things, and this... These big fat blob men can kill me in one hit. Mm -hmm. There we go, okay. So this is quite dangerous. I think I can kill one of them. But I do need to use my shield. This is one of the my bad habits that I've gotten from playing all the prior games. Not prior games. All the subsequent games. Is I've gotten to where I just never use shields anymore. God, there's so much to say about that. Like, the whole system and... The whole idea with Dark Souls is shields. Like, it was designed around shields. 
the idea of, yeah, you can use a shield to block attacks. You can do that. Yeah, see, like then, it's my instinct to completely ignore this entire system. And just roll, because rolling solves everything. But the whole idea is, yeah, you can block attacks, but you won't have any stamina. And since you don't have any stamina, you won't be able to attack afterwards. That's the whole concept behind using a shield. God, his health bar is just not going down. And this, <laughs> you can't do that in Dark Souls 3. This one, yeah, that, this one of the sort of good things about Dark Souls 3. You can't fish for backstab. Personally, I would just get rid of them entirely. This is one of the things I did like about Bloodborne. The fact that visceral attacks were a thing. Because that is way better than uh, visceral attacks and actually having to be in position and charge them up and shit. That is, is a way better system than just being behind someone and needing to heavily script in like specific angles on every single enemy and specific animations that allow them to defend against it. Just have visceral attacks. That's all you ever needed. Or really, what all you ever needed was to not have backstabs at all. Which it took, it took fans forever of the game to be like, to finally realize, oh, you actually don't need them. Because I remember when Dark Souls 3 was coming out. People would bitch endlessly about the fact that they were getting rid of them. Now let's see what we get. Nothing. <laughs> so it'll be a dung pie, maybe. Like, maybe the drops don't change either, in any respect. Yeah. <laughs> there is a single chest back here. This is very dangerous, what I'm doing. It's very dangerous because... In the original version of this, you can just run past them and they'll kind of forget about you. And every enemy in... Oh my god, every, every enemy in Blacktown can actually see me, right? So they're all coming. They're coming hard. Oh god, this is what I came down here for. Green tight, two green tight night shards. Okay, maybe I can run back through. I need to leave. I need to flee for my my pretty life. She's eventually going to be a warrior woman, but not just yet. Oh, but uh, yeah, Dark Souls originally designed, or well, Demon Souls, anyways, designed around shields. Not like you need a shield, but that's the whole idea. Yes, you can block. But whenever you block, it's going to drain so much stamina that you can't counterattack in a lot of cases, or you'll only be able to get in one hit. But people, of course, found out from playing the game, oh, eventually you just get to where you just know the timing so well that you can just roll through everything. And since rolling uses minimal stamina, in most cases, like way less than blocking, and it also has the benefit of relocating you behind something so that you can attack it for free, and you're completely invulnerable to their own counterattacks, and even afterwards you have enough stamina to reposition yourself again, why would you never not use rolling to solve every single problem? So that's always been sort of the, the evolution of the series, which I guess is what I've been trying to get around to. The evolution of the series, it's changed a lot, and it hasn't really changed for the better. So whenever people ask me, are you excited for whatever is coming up next? You know, whether it's Bloodborne 2, whether it's this weird, as of this recording, this weird Aztec-based thing, rumor that was going around about the new game being based on, like, having no weapons at all and being hand-to-hand. -hand and Are you interested, Plague? My answer, no. I'm, I don't care at all. I do not care. Oh, yeah, you guys respawn. I forgot about that. I just don't care. I certainly don't care about Dark Souls. Like, it, they have, I care about this game. I really like this game. But as far as the evolution of the game series go, Dark Souls 3, I don't care. The lore doesn't make... God. The lore doesn't make any sense anymore. It didn't really evolve in the way that I wanted it to. It seems to want to change things. The gameplay isn't as fun because it became too obsessed with being difficult. That's another thing. Like, Dark Souls was never supposed to be hard. It was supposed to be fair. It was supposed... And it, it came out during an era in which games were hand-holding. Like, it, it was during the emergence of video games as being more financially successful as an industry than movies were. So, once 
companies became aware that they wanted to sell video games. And what's the easiest way to sell video video games? Just make them easy. Let's make them fucking easy. So, oh yeah, I want to do a graveyard run. Shit, I better level up using the souls that I have now. Uh, just make the games easy and hand-holdy, and you won't have to actually worry about much of anything. Actually, I need the... Upgrade my decks. I'm going to take decks up to 20. We'll start out... Oh, God. 42. Here they come again. This is... <laughs> it kicked me out. Three. Okay, I only need three. Good. Will that be enough? Nope. Nope, nope. Can't do that. Well, guess this is going to be my farming spot for a while. <laughs> Go on, get out of here. Okay. Come on, reactivate. Yes, there we go. Okay. No, 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 don't leave. Don't leave. Sit back down. What the hell was I saying? Uh, yeah, I need to get this shit up. Okay, 129. That's good enough. Run. Run before they see you. They've already seen you. Run more anyways. Okay, I hope, I hope that they don't just follow me forever. Hopefully, it works. It... This is the reason why I like the idea of this mod, is the way that I made it, because if it's sight-based, that means that you can do things like sneak up on enemies still. And uh, you can maybe even break their line of sight so that they can't see where you're going, and that will enable me to uh, outmaneuver them. Yes. Yes. See, yeah, it did, did work that way, it seems, because that guy turned around once he saw me up here. Now is he going to figure out line of sight and actually follow me up here? Let's find out. Let's just wait here for a while. Okay. What the hell was I saying? I was talking about shields and shit and the evolution of the series. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, the difficulty. But the, the whole idea was that Dark Souls was not a hard game. It was just an ordinary game from a few years prior to that. Before games became very handholdy and very easy. And that's just what Dark Souls was. It was never meant to be an overtly hard, you'll die so many times. That's been on Amkai's shit. That's that that's something that they started. And as a result, the games kind of got wind of it. Miyazaki, I guess, got wind of it and was like, oh, this is what the games, this is what fans apparently want. So Bloodborne was kind of just unnecessarily hard. Oh yeah, the, the shit up there by the elevator. I don't need to do this. Um, and so the games kind of just turned into that. And Dark Souls 3 had that problem too, where it was just, it was trying too hard to be difficult when it didn't need to be. There were a lot of enemies that were just blatantly unfair. Like they had, uh, like the, the basic, uh, Lothric Knights, I guess are a good example. I haven't talked to Haircut yet, and I'm not going to just yet. Lothric Knight Knights are a great example because a lot of their startup animations are so incredibly fast that you just can't respond to them. And I'm not saying that's uh, necessarily a problem with the game, but it is unfair. Like, not unfair, it's unfair, it's unfair. Not like that kind of unfair, just technically it is unfair. If you are positioned against them and they decide, wow, holy shit, that's going to be worth a lot. Why am I getting all these high-end soul items? Ah, bring the sun's first part. Is that another, it seems like that is another... Yeah, it's another spell-based one. I thought, it, for some reason, in my head, in my head, that was an, another attunement-based one, which isn't the case. The strength of miracles. I'm not going to use any miracles. But let's go ahead and equip it. Now, this used to be a mace that I would use to kill the skeletons. <laughs> Instead, it's sorcery remedy. Well, oh well. I thought maybe it would be useful. Maybe this one last chest will be something nice. Why would it be anything nice? Why would anything nice happen? Okay. Anyways, game got way the games got way too ooh, too obsessed with it being difficult for really no reason. Lothric Knights, very good example of that because a lot of their animations are just technically unfair. The startup is so fast that you can't parry based on reaction. You have to just assume that they're going to use that specific attack. And normally with Dark Souls, you can do things like, well, I know if I approach from this specific angle, I'm trying to avoid proccing those other ones down here, that if I approach from this specific angle, the enemy will use this animation every single time. And you use that to your advantage so that you can parry attacks like that. 
but Dark Souls 3 doesn't really work that way. Uh, these skeletons are actually another great example of that. Dark Souls 2 also had this problem here and there. Like, these skeletons also have one specific animation that is so fast you can't respond to it, and even if you're in the middle of attacking them, um, they still, uh, let's go ahead and grab it. They can still get that attack off. Holy shit, another one. Shit. There we go, that's all I wanted. Well, I didn't want specifically for him to back jump off, but I wanted to, I wanted to uh, shove him off the ledge. Okay. These guys take a while to kill, so I'm just trying to get them off the ledge and have it be solved that way. Ah, shit. See, he went into a... <laughs> he went into that parry animation as I was starting up my own anim uh, attack animation. That wasn't really necessarily unfair. I probably should have waited. Solve every problem with rolling. It solves every issue. Why block when you can simply roll away? You don't have to worry about taking... You don't have to worry about taking uh, minor amounts of damage through the shield. You don't have to worry about losing stamina. Just solve every problem with rolling. Let's design a whole game around rolling. Let's make a whole game obsessed with speed. That'll be great, right? Yeah. Okay, enough bitching about that. But yeah, uh, Dark Souls 3 got a little bit too aggressive with its unfairness. It wanted... It, it kind of knew, oh, the players have gotten better... Let's make the game more difficult. And once it got to that point, I just stopped enjoying it. Because every encounter became a chore. Like, this to me is fun. The, the skeletons are a little bit unfair, but not too much. And you st you still have to... Like, even though I've had years of experience fighting these dumb little assholes, you still have to think about what you're doing. It, it still has player engagement. That's probably a term that I should... Holy shit! Black Flame. That'll be useful. Uh, but player engagement is something that I... Is sort of a term... I didn't make up the term... Well, I guess I did make up the term, but I'm sure it exists at some point in history from someone else, but... Player engagement is... Uh, a lot of games have this problem, too. Where they come up with a system that technically does work, but it's not... It, it doesn't have staying power, because it's not very interesting. Because... The, the trick with a uh, the trick with a good game system, combat system, whatever it is, is that it needs to be dynamic enough that you constantly have to be interacting with it. And I don't mean in terms of like busy work. See, that's an unfair attack, by the way, where they just attack like with a very minor startup. Not very fair. Whoa! I'm trying to get both of them at the same time. I was trying to avoid. I was trying to avoid those stairs clipping into me. These guys aren't dropping any souls, so I don't know why I'm bothering doing that. I, I, I used up all my souls specifically so I could do a, a suicide run to collect shit. Let's do that instead. Let's, let's be stupid. I should be wrapping up this first playthrough episode anyways. But video games should have good player engagement. You should have a system that no matter how many times you play it, no matter how many times you utilize it, there's never a perfect solution to your problems where you just know, oh, this enemy, you do this specific move and they can't defend against it. And if you use any other move, Titanite Chunk, great, that's actually nice. And if you use any other move, that move does not work. Like, that's a bad system where you have enemies that are basically just little mini games of this specific sequence of movements. It's all hero again. Oh, it's probably because he's randomizing the... Yeah, yeah, I think he said that. Jesus. <laughs> oh no, my dead corpse is losing blood. However, will I get my 399 souls back from that one location? Okay. Um. But player engagement, yeah, sorry. I, I, I As I was watching my own playthrough, I also came across that. It's like, holy shit, I cannot get a thought out. Because I think about too many things at the same time, and I get distracted too easily. Because as you as you can tell, I have ideas and opinions about pretty much everything. Because I'm just kind of a dickwad like that. Um. Yeah. Crystal Knight Shield. Did I pick this one up already? Yeah, I picked it up already. So nothing really in the graveyard, huh? Didn't really expect it to be a garbage run. 
So the seed wasn't too great in this case for the graveyard. Other things are alright. Ah, this mid-roll is going to be the death of me. That's another thing I need to get rid of. Yeah, see? I, I'm even doing it. I just did it. <laughs> I So many problems could be solved if I just had a better roll. Why am I equipping all these items to raise my defense, which barely does anything, when I could just be naked and just roll around at the speed of light? Oh, God. I can't rest. I can't do it. This runaway... <laughs> Since there's skeletons and zombies everywhere, they're all gonna fuck me. Just run away, brave warrior, whatever your name is. Brave warrior, Freelid. Freelid. If we just run away, that'll solve every issue. Aha! Later, fucker. I would- holy shit! I was about to say I would laugh if one of them just burst through the door at the last second there. And one actually did. I wonder if he's falling right now. I better get out of the way. I can't go back up, ever. For the rest of my life, I can never go back up there. <laughs> and actually, now that I think about it, my options are limited. Because I... I can go to New Londo. I can do that. I do have transient curses. I can do that. That is possible. I could... No. No. I would have to kill Ingward. And I don't want to kill Ingward. I think I think that the key to to the the thing over there to unlock the the gate actually still is on Ingward since it is a key item. Although those are also randomized. I don't know. I don't know where they go. I can't go through the Valley of Drakes because uh, those Drakes are clogging up the the hole so goddamn much that I can't actually do anything down there. And that's usually the route that I take. I might have to go down the Undead Bird. I might actually have to do that. Even though there's something- Oh! Oh! Even something I rarely actually do. You're so evil. Look how evil they are, guys. They're guarding the fucking door! Get out of the do fucking doorway! You naughty skeletons! No! No! They're joining forces! It's not fair! Dark Souls, why'd you become so unfair? What the hell was I talking about before? Fairness in Dark Souls. Oh, good good game system. Good player engagement. But yeah, if you have a system where you come across, like, oh, the green enemies have to be defeated with this attack. That's a bad system, because then you just do the same fucking thing every, every single time. Yeah, it is different, technically. God, I can't even do that. It is technically different. Ugh. Come over here. Let me outsmart you. Yes. I'm a genius. I'm a genius unless these things follow me all the way down there. Oh shit, I never got that. I forgot how to jump in this game. I'm gonna assume it's B. Yes, it's B. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll just stay here. I'm gonna set up a tent here and just live here forever in safety. Okay, let's see what this is. There's one more thing I wanna get. It's, a, it's actually just a humanity. The first ordinary item. It's not the, the ring or anything, but it's still something I should have found early on in the game. Oh god, why did I make this decision? Oh, good decision. No, that was that was an okay decision. It's just unfair from the flying hollow standpoint. Um, holy shit. This one actually didn't. Okay, just run. Run. Oh god. Oh god. Why did I install this mod? But a good, a good player engagement system is one in which it's dynamic. Like, this shit is dynamic as hell. <sighs> Fuck me. Damn, I hate that attack. The one hollow attack that's super effective. And you have to heal through it. I don't really have enough to tank all that. But this is a good system because it has good player engagement. Because no matter how many times you fight these guys, it's always a little bit different. And you might say, well, Dark Souls 3 does that, doesn't it? It has good player engagement. Because, um... Uh, since they have so many varied attacks, you can't really approach them all the same way. And that's sort of as technically true, but the fact that they're, um... Uh, like, in the case of the Lothric Knights, that good example. Like, in that case... Yeah, normal firebomb. 
In that case, their attacks are varied enough, and each of them are very fast. It's not, it's not like these guys, where all their attacks are very slow, except they have one attack that's unfair, and that just kind of takes you by surprise ever so often. So you always have to be a little bit careful. Like that, this idea with these enemies. Really? Uh, but with those enemies, like the Lothric Knights or many Dark Souls 3 enemies, it's all of their attacks are unfair enough because the game is trying to be hard. Red and Hot Donny Chunk. That you, um, I mean, you, you obviously have a chance. You know, like, it's not an unbeatable game by any stretch of the imagination or anything. But it does create a lot of problems as far as enjoyment factor. Because you can't really learn the enemies because the enemies are always going to have attacks that you can't really do anything against. Not that they're unbeatable attacks, but, you know, you can't really prepare. Like, I know these guys' movesets. This is part of Dark Souls. It's just learning the moveset. I know what they're going to do. Like, I know that I knew that that guy was going to attack potentially three times, but I assumed that he was going to attack only twice because sometimes they also do that. But I just fucked up that time. That's part of the gameplay. But, of course, in Dark Souls 3, you can't really do that game intentionally trying to be a little bit too difficult. God damn it. Ugh. This does really feel a lot like... It's not the same thing as playing the game all over again. Like, it's not randomizing enemy encounters or anything. Which would be another potential mod. I guess you could technically do that. Using game files. Like, I have all the game files unpacked now. Which is something I've never done before. So I guess technically I could create some mods. Although it would be pretty... Wow, really? All right. Lucy, it's been a while. You still suck. And I still can't use... Well, I can... I can. Yeah, I can use uh, both hands. So there we go. All right. Inherit the will of your father. So, um... <laughs> whatever it is I was talking about. Player engagement, so on and so forth. Dark Souls does it very well. Because it's not trying to be hard. Dark Souls is not a hard game, but it is it is fair, but it does have little bits of unfairness combined with a good enough robust system. It's not a perfect system that does lend itself to actually uh, uh, providing dynamic gameplay. And because that gameplay is dynamic, it allows you to involve yourself in the system, and that's what gives, gives the game a lot of replayability. Now, I want to go up here... To show you guys something one last time. God damn it, I didn't want to trigger that fucking dragon. Now he's going to be here forever. Fuck you. But I don't want to show you guys one last thing. <sighs> if I can avoid dying. One last thing. Christ. Where'd you come from? You miserable fuck. <laughs> this makes the game a lot harder, doesn't it? Shit. I was trying to do a back step, but I fucked that up. Oh, no, this one. I have to concentrate, or else. Because I want this, I don't want to have to do a run back to show you guys one last thing. There we go, okay. Oh, one last thing. One last thing. Go away. I'm trying to do a bit. I do a fucking bit. Okay. But... He's not here. <laughs> the one last component of this stupid fucking game. Starting offline mode, really? Maybe it's because I have modified files or something. Maybe I just need to reload or something. But it's supposed to have Perma Grave Lord on, is the other fucking part of this goddamn thing. And this is the first area where you can see them. But they're not fucking here, so you don't get to see it. So my whole bit at the end of the video where I'm like, Oh, I'm so scared of the Perma Grave Lords! Where I'm doing that thing, you don't get to fucking have it. They're just normal goddamn enemies. Which fucking sucks. Fuck this. Fuck my ass. I'm gonna get this goddamn bonfire and you're gonna like it. And then the enemies are going to be so angry. 
Haha! Can't stop me! Can't stop me, fucker! Can't fucking stop me! Yes! Bitch! Yeah! And they don't see me starting out, so they can't attack me here. I'm a hero, I did it. Good, <laughs> good job, Freeland. Whatever the fuck I named you. You pretty lady, you. The adventures of Freeland continues. I'll know she'll be a success if people start drawing her. I'm certainly not gonna do it. Okay, so I guess... Let's see if I can peek around the corner. Permagrave Lord Phantoms, are you there? Are you th there, Permagrave Lord Phantoms? They're supposed to be here. They were working last time. Hold on. I know what I'll do. I think I know what might be the calls. Let's do that. Permagrave Lord Phantoms, are you here? Are you no, no, they're not here. What if I rest at the bonfire? Will you be here now? So I have a funny end to this video? No, they won't be. Welcome back, everyone, to my second playthrough of the game. Enjoy. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Bye.